Hello, Electronic Music Pals. My name is Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last tutorial, I described using score files as a way to create longer and more structured compositions. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about one of my favorite techniques, cutting up breakbeats with the sampler. Now, this tutorial is not going into the history of break core or drum and bass because although I like those styles very much, I'm not all that knowledgeable about them. That being said, if you have an interest in the drillier side of drum and bass or break core, if you like the Richard D. James record by Aphex Twin, or if you like Square Pusher or Venetian Snares or that kind of thing, this tutorial will show you a way to create those kinds of complex textures in Chuck. Unlike in previous tutorials where you had to watch me type, I'm going to go a little more Food Network on this tutorial and pull things out of the oven and go over what they look like. My final file ended up kind of long, and although the algorithms I used make sense and are not that complicated, nevertheless, I'll spare you the time I spent thinking about them and testing them. We'll start with a breakbeat. Here it is in Audacity. Bands of breakbeat-derived music will notice that it has a non-coincidental similarity to the Amen break from the song Amen Brother by the Winstons, which was performed by the late Gregory Coleman. There's plenty of content describing the history of the Amen break on YouTube, and I suggest you check some of that stuff out. For our purposes, I only bring it up because I did model our break after the classic Amen break, but I did personally remake a new version of it in Ableton so that the algorithm wouldn't take down my tutorial. Okay, so in tutorial number 13, I described how to use a sound buffer UGen to play back a sound file from your disc. To go over this briefly, I've got a signal chain that passes sound from a sound buffer UGen to a pan 2 UGen, and then on to the DAC. Then I turn the gain down a little bit on the sound buffer. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff with this sound, so we want a little headroom. Then we build up the path of the file by using the location of the chuck file, plus the name of the wave file, chuck that path into a file name string, and then chuck that file name string into our sound buffer. We play it back by chucking eight seconds into now. Okay, so we can hear our breakbeat, but it's not the right tempo for drum and bass. Let's multiply it by 1.4 and make our lives simpler by stashing that number in a variable so it can be reused. Let's define our tempo by making it 120 beats per minute times our main rate. That gets us to the slower side of drum and bass tempos. Now we get to the part where it gets interesting. Let's define a function that cuts this breakbeat into 32 slices. Because I made this drum break with a drum machine, we know that it's metronomically perfect, so the drum hits will automatically line up well with those slices. I designed the function so that it lets me choose which slice the sound buffer will start on, and then play by a duration that I choose. Here's the sound of me restarting the loop by choosing the first slice twice. I let it play for one and a half beats, and then I let it play for two and a half beats. Let's just play that whole thing twice. Now, I played around for a minute and I put together a pattern that sounds nice. Here's how that sounds. Notice how I can seamlessly jump around in the sound file and use different durations to completely rearrange my drum break. Let's try something we haven't talked about before. I've added a reverb in between my sound buffer and my DAC, but then I've used a new operator afterward. This is the unchuck operator. Just as the chuck operator will connect the output of a UGen to another UGen, the unchuck operator will disconnect them. I've made a copy of our first two bars and I've added chuck and unchuck operators to connect and disconnect the reverb to different sides of the DAC. Here's how it sounds. So that's a fun trick to keep in your back pocket. It can be real fun to temporarily connect and disconnect your effects. I commented out the first two sections so we can work on our next two bars. In this section, I cut things up a little more. I think it's a good idea to visually break up your parts into regular sized sections like this. In this case, I chose eight beats. As you can see, it gets a little hard to see how big they are, so I limit their size to keep the arithmetic under control. Here I've exploited the sound buffer's rate property to temporarily reverse and slow down my drum break. I also play with the panning a little bit. Note what I bought myself when I called that 1.4 my main rate. I can change that rate for the whole file and not change it in all of these places. For my next section, I decided I wanted to use stutter edits. That means I wanted the ability to re-trigger my slice using an arbitrary divisor. 
I didn't have that function yet, but it's deceptively simple to make. Here's what it looks like. I simply call the cut break function once for every iteration in the divisor, and I divide the duration up by the divisor as well. Here's what it sounds like. I like this stutter effect, but I thought it would be more dramatic if the gain changed along with it. I asked for a ramp up function that gets used just like the stutter function. If you dig into the ramp up function I made, you can see that inside it, there's a sporking call to a function called volume ramp, which then changes the gain to 1 8 and then smoothly returns the original gain by steps governed by the divisor. Here's how it sounds. I chucked the reverb back in to make it sound cooler. At this point, I have a fairly robust set of tools to chop up my breaks. I played with those tools for two more bars. My challenge to you, the viewer, is this. Having seen how I made the stutter and the ramp function, how would you make a function that swept the pitch instead of the volume? While I was making this tutorial, my six-year-old son Noah came in and contributed a piano solo. Here's what it sounds like in Audacity. I added a little reverb. Here's what it sounds like if you feed it through my Chuck script. I added a little stereo delay to it for seasoning. So you can see that in addition to being a great tool for cutting up breaks, this technique is a powerful tool for manipulating samples in general. Just for fun, let's hear how the piano sample and the drum sample sound played side by side. Now, speaking as somebody that's been cutting up breaks since the 90s, this is pretty powerful stuff. I really like how simple it is to create very precise edits and to build tools for making increasingly complex textures. In this tutorial, we discussed a powerful way to manipulate samples in Chuck. In our next tutorial, we'll discuss oscillator sync.